Hey, it's Pete. Welcome back to my workshop. This week I'm focusing my attention on the electrical panel for the Dynamite 2800 retrofit. So I'm going to be reusing as much of the old electrical system as I can. Now previously I have sold off the Dynamite control panel, the actual electrical brain of the whole thing, and the stepper drives to somebody who was still in need of those pieces. I'm going to reuse the spindle drive and I'm going to reuse the 48 volt power supply, at least initially. If I run into problems with those down the road, I'll swap them out. Uh, I'm going to be using the Acorn system by Centroid, and I'm going to be pairing that up with some stepper drives from Gecko, the G251X series. Now I cleaned off the old electrical panel, I'm going to give it a coat of paint just to have a fresh start. So strip the panel clean of all of its components and screws and bits of tape and what have you and sanded it down and then going to give it a coat of white paint. I honestly have no idea what happened to this can of paint. It sometimes seemed to work and sometimes didn't. It just created a big mess, but I got the job done. While the paint dries on the electrical panel, I'm going to turn my attention to the stepper drives. I have some preparation I need to do there. The Gecko drives require some form of a heat sink. Now I actually have a heat sink that came out of a much larger stepper drive. It's a, it was a 6 to a 9 amp stepper drive that failed. Uh, so we're going to take the heat sink out of that unit. Uh, we're going to cut off some excess metal and we're going to use that as the basis of our heat sink for these three new drives. I laid out the heat sink with a pattern for mounting the drives, and we're going to drill and tap them for 440 screws. Definitely not my favorite screw size, but we'll get through it. and then just pop a couple holes in the base of it to be able to mount it. I don't know if I'm going to mount it from the uh, front side or the back side, so I'm just going to put four holes in it for the time being, and we'll go with whatever works. Hey, if you like seeing this kind of content on YouTube, why don't you pop on down there and give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, slide on over and hit that subscribe button. I had some heat sink compound left over from a previous project, so I put that on the back of each drive just for good measure.
right, the plan is to reuse as many of the existing sub-assemblies as possible. Going to, at least for the time being, reuse the 48 volt DC power supply. Uh, it's roughly the same size as a new 48 volt power supply, so if I do end up sh uh, swapping it out, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, so we're going to be putting that back in place. And uh, the idea being that most of the, uh, the wiring connections can remain in their original spaces, utilizing uh, some of the original pass-through holes to get where they're going. So we'll be reusing the stepper power supply. We're going to be reusing the uh, spindle speed control, which goes there. And then we have uh, a few I.O. panels. This panel just has some uh, I.O. that uh, I don't know that we'll actually be using, but I'm going to put the panel back in because it gives us something to uh, tie things onto. And even if I remove some of these existing boards on here, uh, it'll, it'll be a mounting point where I can place things. Preserving the original layout is it's not, uh, it's not something I have to do. So if it turns out I don't have enough space to do what I want to do, then we'll start tearing into that. Okay, so we've got this space free for our new electronics. Now, there is there is room on the side of this where something could be mounted. This is the original location uh, of the control board from the original dynamite system. So that is a possibility of just putting the uh, the new Acorn board up there uh, and just leave this for stepper drives and I.O. This was the original location of the stepper drive rack and then some powered connectors down here. This is the Acorn board with uh, the newer relay board output that's shipping with current units. And then we have the small stepper rack. Alright, I think this is uh, I think this is roughly what I'm going to go with for the time being. Um, it's a little tight, but I like the fact that all of my outputs are going to end up down here at the bottom. Uh, my inputs are around this side, and then my step and direction signals can come out of here and go down into the drives. So I think this is what we're going to go with for the time being uh, until I find a problem with it and decide we have to change it for some reason. If you missed the beginning of this milling machine restoration series, I'll put a card up here to take you back to the beginning of the playlist. to continue with this original piece from over here. We're not going to be using the DB25 connector because we're going to be wiring straight out of the wire terminals over. So I don't need to worry about that. These are inputs, these are inputs and then step in direction 
I guess we can run this in here. Now down here at the bottom, originally, there was a screw terminal block, and then there was another screw terminal block up here that uh, went to the spindle drive. I think I'm going to replace those uh, with DIN rail with terminal blocks on. I have a I have a piece of DIN rail here. I have to cut it, but uh, I think that would roughly work there. And then I can put as many connection points as I want. The so I think that will give me uh, a lot more flexibility. I'll probably end up just using that piece right there. And then I'll cut this. And I think I'm going to use this piece of wire away. This wire away was originally here uh, and met up with this wire away. But since I've moved over the stepper drives, I think I'm going to end up using this here. And so we're going to cut that as well. putting some on here that I have for the time being and uh, as I actually start wiring we'll figure out what we really need. Okay. So that's just kind of a placeholder for something to come, although I don't know what it's going to be. And I need to put this in up here. One last thing to mount up here is the power supply for the Centroid system. Now this is a 24 volt power supply. Actually, the power supply itself is marked that it's a 5-volt and 24-volt power supply, but the Centroid only uses the 24-volt. Now, let's see what we've got here for wiring. This can come up through here. Yeah, so we'll be fine with this. All right, I reconfigured this a little bit, I moved the DIN rail over so I could fit in one more short piece of wire away just to give me a place to run the Acorn power wires. I got to get a different heat sink fan here, something that runs on 5 or 12 volts, so I'll get that taken care of over the course of this week and we'll go from there. And I need to grab a few more terminal blocks for up here. Well, it took longer to get to this point than I had anticipated. And I didn't quite make as much progress as I would have liked, but there's always next week. And I'm going to start hooking up some wires. But hey, if you like this kind of content on YouTube, pop on down there and give it a thumbs up. And while you're at it, why don't you slide over there and hit that subscribe button. I'll catch you next week.